Hey, go ahead and let it all out. question because every day is so different. <laughs> all right. Uh, okay, so I, I'll i tell you a little bit better. I, I manage 18 school cafeterias. 18? Um, 18 school what? cafeterias, yes. Welcome to the Success Fitness Podcast. I am your host, Christian Evans. This podcast is for women and men over 30 who wants to achieve success in their fitness journey. And our special guest today, nutritionist Kayla Wilkins, will help us do just that by sharing why she wanted to become a nutritionist, how she fits working out at 4.30 a.m. into her schedule while managing 18 school cafeterias. And what does she mean by you just gotta actually do it? Without further ado, Success Fitness family, please welcome nutritionist Kayla Wilkins to the podcast. How you doing, Kayla? I'm doing good. Thank you so much for having me. Good, good to have you. Good to have you. A little shaky intro. First interview I've done in about seven weeks, so I don't know where I'm coming, where I'm going yeah, or whatever. Okay. We're just going to let it roll. We're going to let it roll. I had a brain fart because I'm so used to just saying mm -hmm. what I'm going to say versus introducing somebody. It's like, okay, right. you're, introducing, you're introducing somebody. It's like, oh yeah. You know, so it's kind of mm -hmm. like muscle memory just a little bit. So I'm a little rusty, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. enough about me. Where are you from and where are you at currently? And how's the weather where you are? Yes. Yeah, so I am originally from Memphis, Tennessee. I okay. currently reside in Nashville, Tennessee. I've been in Nashville since so I was in Murfreesboro, which is on like 30 minutes outside of Nashville. Okay. Um, so I was there between 2009 and 2014. So I've been in Nashville since 2015. Um, and uh, the weather here today is actually nice. We're supposed to hit 81 degrees. So okay. no rain or anything like that today. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Today. Right, right, right. Same here in Peoria, Illinois. Like I said earlier, we're about seven hours from you. Oh, it's not. Uh, that was my vision board, folks. <laughs> um, but uh, about seven hours from you. And they say it's supposed to rain today. But mm -hmm. then again, who knows how that goes? So it's the Midwest and we get some of some of everything uh, throughout the day, throughout the day. Sometimes oh, yeah, it's we raining. Get all four seasons yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. It's kind of crazy. So what made motivated you to start your your fitness journey? Yeah, so honestly, I've always been athletic. Um, I was in sports and in dance since I was probably like seven or eight. I've been dancing since I was eight. I started playing softball when I was actually 12. Um, and I danced all throughout high school, danced all throughout college. Um, actually, what got me really started, started on my fitness journey was when I decided to major in nutrition. So that was back in 2011. Um, so I took a sports nutrition class and I found out how both go hand in hand. I always right. wanted to stay fit. Um, so it kind of just pushed me to go to the physical activity side as well. Okay. 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 So in that, in, in that journey, far as, you know, staying active, staying fit, what, what was kind of like the, the key thing to dive into, you know, nu nutrition? So are you asking what? what nutrition like what i needed to do nutritionally wise to compensate with the physical activity well more so and a great question great question great follow-up question clarity <laughs> uh no it's all good it's all good that's what it's all about but during your let's say you you you, you stay fit right as far mm -hmm. as like stayed active in that regards my fault stayed active you know playing sports and then you talked about you know going into and thinking about as far as the 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 dietitian nutrition aspect mm -hmm. what was what what led to that though because you could have went oh, in okay. you know what i mean you could have went in you could have went to kinesiology you could have mm -hmm. did business administration mm -hmm. what made you zero in on like, okay, let me, let me focus yeah. on what this, you know, as far as the nutritional aspect about it is. Yeah. So when I originally got to college, I wanted to be a physical therapist. Okay. Um, so I majored in exercise science um, with a minor in health. Okay. Um, and so I actually shadowed a physical therapist. I mm -hmm. absolutely hated it. I didn't want to do it. I told my mom, yeah. I said, this ain't, this ain't what I want to do. Switched it to nursing, was trying to get away from all the science classes. <laughs> so I changed it to public health. Um, and then I was like, I'm not doing, I'm, what am I going to do with this? Like, yes, it's still in the realm of health that I want to stay in, but what am I going to do with this? Mm -hmm. So I decided to minor in nutrition and you could take any nutrition class you wanted to when you minored in nutrition. So I actually took a maternal child nutrition class and- okay. That class is what actually made me 
major in nutrition because it was so amazing to me how the mother's health directly um, affected the baby's health. Like from okay. the mom having gestational diabetes to the baby coming out with having low blood sugar. It was just amazing. And I couldn't understand for the life of me while some moms would still smoke or still drink. Right, still right. Crappy if they know it directly affects something that they are basically forming in their body. So that's really you. what made me go into, you know, the dietetics route. Okay. Okay. So nursing wasn't your thing. You're like, I'm trying to get away from the science classes, but something triggered you from the maternal standpoint of nutrition and how it affects the, the child that they're, they're carrying. Is there anything like in specific that just like, was like a highlight was like an aha moment. Like, you know what? I need to dive more into that. You just listed some of them, but out of those, mm -hmm. were there any, uh, one, two, or three that was like, okay, I need to know more about it. Cause we all fall down rabbit holes and just going down and trying to find more information. Uh, mm -hmm. then we initiated, well, we, well, we initially wanted to dive into and things, uh, you find out during that, you know, deep dive are, mm -hmm. is just more interesting. So what were, you know, one thing or a couple of things in that regards? Yeah. So basically with taking that maternal child nutrition class, it didn't really tell you the basics of how different um, vitamins and minerals and nutrients like actually affect like those organs or like really like the insides of your body. So right. I was like, I need to, I really need to dive a little deeper, but how can I do this? Talk to the advisor that I said, you basically need to um, take a basic nutrition class Um that was number one. I wanted to know how everything, how all those vitamins and nutrients actually worked in the body. Um, number two, you know, I told you I was trying to get away from the science classes. So that's why I moved from nursing to nutrition. Nutrition is science. So yeah. I still had to take all <laughs> Ain't those no science it. Ain't no escaping yes. it. <laughs> yes. I, all those science classes I was trying to escape, I actually had to take them. And that was like my number two. Once I put nutrition and science together, mm -hmm. it was like, oh, it made sense. It made exactly. Sense. And so then I was like, oh, okay, I can take these classes. It ain't no biggie. It ain't as hard as I, I got it's going to be, especially if it goes hand in hand with nutrition. The only one that I feel like I didn't need to take was organic and biochem. Yeah. But, you know, that's neither here. <laughs> right, right, right. Right. Now yeah. you say science was like, um, let's say you wasn't feeling it. Right. So what in particular, or what degree of science, science classes you didn't agree with, or just wasn't connecting with you? Chemistry was kicking my Chemistry, butt. Yeah. Chemistry yeah. was kicking my butt. Um, mm -hmm. You know, just to be transparent, I had to take chemistry twice mm -hmm. um, in order because I, I had got a C in it the first time. And if I wanted to get an internship, I needed to have A's and B's. So oh, really? I, ended up okay. taking it, I ended up taking it again. Okay. Studied a little bit harder. Okay. Got a teacher, a professor that was not foreign so that I could understand them. Say um, it again. It's a, lot of those, <laughs> it's a lot of those at MTU. I got you. I got you. Um, I got you. I got so you. I did that. And, you know, after I learned the basics of chemistry, everything else after that was easier. Okay. Okay. It, it made sense. It made mm -hmm. sense. As far as me and chemistry, um, as far as like, you know, atoms and science and all that, I just, it never clicked for me. I think, uh, I think I passed with like a C in high school. That's probably about the last chemistry, uh, class that I took. But far as like science, I'm always interested in, in science. And like you said, as far as with, you know, since we're both in the, in the healthcare field one way or another, mm -hmm. it is science, you know what I mean? It is, it is science too. And, but it breaks off until, you know, different, you know, branches of it and everything like that. And so when you said like, okay, now the, the, the nutrition and the science, by the time you end up combining it, it started, you know, making sense. What was that aha moment? Like, we're like, okay, you know what, now I'm merging this the science with nutrition and it's not so bad. What was that aha moment for you then? Yeah, um, basically learning that, you know, how carbs and protein and fat all work hand in hand mm -hmm. for your body to work at its optimal level. And then really once I found that out, it's like, I'm not restricting this. I'm not restricting yeah. that. I'm mm -hmm. going to eat this. I'm going to mm -hmm. eat that. Mm -hmm. That was another because in the media or on Google, you see all these things like don't eat this so you can lose weight. Don't eat this because you'll get diabetes. Don't right. eat this. It'll make your blood pressure high. 
you know, don't drink juice or, you know, whatever. So Mm -hmm. being able to find like that evidence based, um, you know, scientific facts really helps me um, just be like more. Okay. I got you. I got you. I got you. Because we all have those aha moments, especially when we start again, going down this rabbit hole of information that we're acquiring. And it's, it's one of those things to where when it gets debunked, you're like, man, I spent a lot of time, you know, let's say depriving myself or not uh, having something that I wanted. And if, you know, I would have known this science right now about said thing, you know, maybe things could have been, you know, different, or I gave somebody the wrong information until you end up acquiring the the right type of information. And that's the importance of nutritionists and, mm-hmm. and dietitians. So mm-hmm. um, you, you, you took your, um, you took your course in nutrition or far as far as college courses, right? Mm-hmm. And you end up graduating when? I graduated undergrad in 2014. I okay. graduated with my master's in 2020. Okay. okay. Congrats. Congrats. Okay. Thank just you. recent. Just recent, right? Yeah. Cause I, um, really? so, okay. Yeah. I basically, um, in undergrad, I only did food and nutrition science. As soon as I left there, I started working as a nutrition educator for the WIC program, which is women, infants, and children. You know, I told you I love that maternal child nutrition. Gotcha. Section. Okay. I, okay. I it's started sense. working with that population. Um, But I started feeling like stagnant. I felt like I was um, getting very comfortable and I don't like feeling like that. So I I, I like, I need to go back to school. I need to go back and finish the dietetics portion of it. So I did that. um, And then my master's and my internship program was combined. And I did that from 2018 to 2020. Okay. 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 So the position that you are in, what is your official job title? Right now? Yes, ma'am. I'm a nutrition field manager for uh, school nutrition. Okay. 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 So tell me about a typical day. Um, what Ooh. entails in that? Yep. <laughs> Go That's ahead and let it all out. Question because every day is so different. <laughs> all right. Uh, okay. So I, I'll tell you a little bit background. I manage 18 school cafeterias. 18? Um, 18 school what? cafeterias. Yes. Um, it's, they, it's, Metro is very big. So we okay. have 140 schools here and we have eight different nutrition field managers. Um, so I manage 18 um, and I probably manage anywhere between 80 and 150 employees on a daily basis. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. Um, so basically my day, my phone will start ringing sometimes between 5.30 a.m. and 6.30 a.m. with my managers calling me, somebody called out or they can't come. So maybe I got to go and open a school and get breakfast started, get the day going. Um, I have to approve orders. I have a lot of auditing that I have to do, like state audits, making sure that my schools and my employees are abiding by all um, policies and procedures. Um, okay. Safety and sanitation is a huge thing that we have to look for. Um, I'm serve safe certified. That basically okay. means that, you know, I know from the state side down to the cafeteria side in terms of what um, safety regulations that we have to do, making sure that the food is at the right temperature before we serve it, making sure that it's cooked properly, um, making sure everything is clean, being wiped down. Okay. Um, but I, I'm going to be honest, it's hard for me to tell you what a day-to-day look like because mm-hmm. every single day is different. But a lot of my job requires um, managing employees. The only time it gotcha. really has to do with nutrition is if I have to change a menu around or gotcha. when I'm cooking or doing culinary training and things like that. But um, a lot of it has to do with managing my employees. I got you. I got you. I got you. So that's interesting because unless that that was a part of the the curriculum um far as like n- nutrition and, and it is it's and the, and the one dietitian side. far as okay it's, far as like management one, it's just like one side is food service management gotcha okay okay that's that's interesting because i'm like well how did you go from that to, to that but that you know what i'm saying it, it makes sense it makes mm-hmm. it makes sense right now so yeah managing people is can be challenging. I always said because I've had a uh, stint in management for a few years, at least as far as food management is at the job. It's pretty much easy. It's the managing of people. 
you know, you got personalities, you know, you got attitudes, good and bad. Some mm -hmm. people don't get along with this person or they don't want to do this duty or this job by yeah. the books. And they yeah. gotta have a reason why. And it's like, well, there's not even my reason why. It's more like you said, state regulated and different things like that. And having to, you know, stay on, stay on top of that. So mm -hmm. you told me a little bit about uh your day in in that regard as far as for the job. Now, mm -hmm. personal life, what does it look like in regards to far as you and in, in working yeah. out in your diet and your nutrition? How does that look like for you? How does Kayla take care of Kayla? Yeah. So um, recently, well, I won't even say recently, at the beginning of this year, some sometime in January, I started going to the gym at 4.30 a.m. Um, the reason why I started doing that is because I don't like feeling like rushed in the evening. I felt like my evenings were like super packed with me trying to, you know, work go to the gym, come home, create nutrition content or work with outside clients. I'm asleep by 8, 30, 9 o'clock. Right, so right. I don't have a big window of being able to really just take care of Kayla. Um, So I started going to the gym at 4 30. Um, here lately, it's been a little rough. I kind of go like, it's been a little scattered, maybe like two, three times a week, but I'm trying to work my way back up to four consistent days um, a week. Um, but as long as my nutrition stays where it needs to be, I haven't seen any changes in like my weight or anything like that. Okay. And I think that's just because I've been doing it for so long. Um, but that's what, so start my day at 4.30 a.m. I work out, I'm probably in the gym for about 45, 50 minutes, um, uh -huh. no longer than an hour. Um, so I do weight training. I do a little bit of cardio. Sometimes okay. I do like Pilates, um, a lot of ab work. Um, and then I get ready for work, do my work day. So nutrition wise, I eat three meals, two snacks every day. Okay. 80, 80 ounces of water on a daily basis. Good, good. I'm okay. feeling well or something like that. But typically that's what it looks like. My meals are always balanced. I don't restrict. I have, I eat carbs, protein, and fats, healthy fats, of course. Good. Um, and then my snacks always consist of protein and carbs to keep me full um, throughout the day. Um, I do not restrict myself. If I want a donut, I'm gonna go and eat a donut. Right, right, Doesn't right. Mean I right. have to eat three, but right. I will eat sweets every now, every now and then. Right, right, um, right. So that's basically how I take care of myself. Okay, okay, good. Okay. What is your uh most favorite muscle group to work out when you're working out the gym at 4 30 in the morning? My bottom half. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Legs. I work glutes. out my legs. My, my okay. bottom half get works out every single time I go. If I'm walking, I feel like I'm working out my bottom half. Yeah. If yeah. I'm on the stair method, I'm working out my bottom half. <laughs> okay, okay, good deal. Good deal. What about your least favorite? My my arms and my back, I absolutely hate it. Yeah. It hurt so bad. Like I, I got you. Even after, like during it hurt. Yeah. But the after effect is worse than when you're doing it. Yeah. yeah. I got you. I got you. I'm pretty much the same way, but flip flop. You know, oh, okay. lately back has been my favorite exercise or muscle group to work. Um, mm -hmm. but legs have been my least favorite. I've said it a thousand times on this podcast. It's yeah. more of a love hate because once I get into doing legs. You know, you look up, I look up and a whole hour and a half is going by and I want to do more. I want to do everything else that's mm. in the gym that's associated with with the legs. So it's again, I just have a love, a love hate relationship, you know, arms. I got to do more with my biceps. I'm trying to uh, just find a way to implement that in my splits mm -hmm. as 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 well you know everything else is pretty much you know what i'm saying oh, okay this is pretty much okay but getting up and being at the gym at 4 30 in the morning it's one thing to be at the gym at 4 30 in the morning you know you just don't sleep there and just wake up you know at least far as <laughs> me you know i sleep in my gym you know i have a gym in my home you know what i mean okay. i can wake uh -huh. up and go you know what i mean right uh -huh. there but you know how is it far as for you to to wake up and then go to said gym <laughs> It don't get no easier. Yeah. It's hard. Every time it's hard. But honestly, okay. the hardest part is planting my feet on the floor. Yeah. Once I plant my feet on the floor, I'm typically good. Um, I was doing a pre-workout, um, but I started doing some research on the pre-work, um, pre just pre-workouts, period. Um, 
it affects your liver and mm -hmm. you know, too much caffeine for even just a woman can throw her hormones off. Really? Um, it can affect your fertility. Like it's just really? a whole, yep, whole lot of research I was doing. Um, so I just, I'm just gonna start eating half a banana like I was doing before. Like even when I, when I was going to gym in the evening, I would just eat a half a banana before I would go work out. Um, so I'll start like planting my feet on the floor, go eat the half a banana, go ahead and get ready. By the time I get to the gym, I'll have the energy that I need to work out. Okay. So you bring up a great point from your professional opinion and observation and experience. Why do you think people feel like they need pre-workout? Just simply because, and, and I'll even say it from my own yeah. experience, once that pre-workout gets, gets in your system, it's like an energy boost. Gotcha. Like it gives you all the energy that you need. But I'll say this for myself, and I haven't really asked anybody else that takes a pre-workout. But for me, when I'm like, when I do my legs, because I be lifting pretty heavy. And then maybe when I'm like 35 minutes into my workout, I started feeling sick. And I'm really? like, okay, mm -hmm. I started feeling sick. Like I wanted to throw up. And it's been times where I've worked out and I feel like I was going to throw up because I was going so hard. Yeah. But if I've had a pre-workout, it's no reason that I should start feeling lightheaded or anything like that. Cause I, I, I ate dinner. Yeah. So I, it's not like I've been fasting for, you know, 12 hours or anything like that. So that also was another reason why I was okay. like, let me just start doing some research because I'm not supposed to feel like this. This is supposed right, to be right, right, whole right. workout. So from right. my professional opinion, I just think that people, you know, do it because you know it makes them feel like they got all the energy that they need so they can get through their workout that's right that's just my professional opinion right i appreciate and they don't want to eat anything like they don't want to eat a heavy meal or anything gotcha. okay 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 and i'm gonna give context to reason why why i asked that just mm -hmm. um what was it my last podcast was in regards to coffee and pre-workout and I've come across this article is that you know coffee can be used as a great pre-workout and post-workout right mm -hmm. and I'm pro coffee. I'm so pro coffee. I got more coffee t-shirts and mugs and all that stuff. Right. Um, the most coffee I have before workouts, maybe a cup. Right. And I don't drink coffee every single day, but it pretty much came out of, I took some pre-workout one time. I think it was some C4 and it made my skin itch. And I didn't, I didn't like that, you know, and you know, working out, everybody's different. Some people need so much energy at the very top of their workout, as opposed to just working out and eventually everything will get brighter around you. You know, right. your ears will start opening up, you know, your skin to start, you know, warming up. You know, I don't think people want to give themselves that much time to, you know, warm themselves up. You know, mm -hmm. you can't just walk into the gym and just squat 315 right off the back. I mean, some people can, don't get me wrong, but some things are, you know, you have to yeah, progressively <laughs> overload. You know what I mean? Don't yeah. get me wrong. I, I've done it. I've gone in and bench press 315 right off the back. No warm up, no nothing. You yeah. know what I mean? But people, it's, people want that heightness that energy instantly and mm -hmm. i'm like no that's not it mm -hmm. um but what i do drink uh during my workouts if not coffee then green tea green tea is a great energy source as far as for me mm -hmm. um and in regards to what you're talking about with with caffeine and what it can do to um you know as far as females hormone the, some of the females hormones yeah. can you expound a little bit more on that if you can yeah men and women are so different okay. as we I don't want to say this because you a man. Men are simple. <laughs> men are simple from just they just simple, right? <laughs> yeah. But women are very complex from the emotional category to their physical to their internal category. So as far as caffeine and even with coffee, I am not opposed to coffee. Coffee is good for you if you do it in the right way. If it's not overloaded with a whole lot of sugar and yeah. stuff like that, I am pro coffee. I just don't drink coffee because I don't like the taste. I got you. I if got I you. like the taste, I would probably drink it. Yeah. But as far as like when it comes to coffee and just caffeine and a female's um, hormonal mm -hmm. hormones. Um, so when a woman drinks caffeine on an empty stomach and it's not paired with fat and protein or anything like that, it it makes our hormones just get off balance because a balanced blood sugar, which means you need balanced meals, that's what stabilizes your hormones. Just like balanced meals stabilize your um, blood sugar, it right. stabilizes your hormones. So I always suggest to my clients, if you're a coffee drinker or even if a client says, well, I drink coffee before my workout, I'm cool with that. Drink the coffee, but maybe throw 
a scoop of collagen in there. Gotcha. Or something like that. Or even if you, you know, put some coconut oil in it or something gotcha. like that, just yeah. so that it's balanced. You know what I'm saying? Instead yeah. of straight caffeine, because yeah. when you do just straight caffeine, that's when your whole body can get unbalanced. And I mean, I've even seen it with men sometimes mm -hmm. where you know, men do still have hormones. Like yeah. you guys are not, you know, subject from that. Like you do still have hormones. So I just suggested to everybody because I'm a woman, I do more research on women. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out, you know, what, what works for me, what doesn't work for me. But if I had a male client, I have more women clients. I have had male clients, but if I had a male client, I would definitely still tell him, you know, you can do the coffee before your workout, but maybe throw like a half a scoop of protein in there or something like that so that you are not just throwing caffeine in your body and you, cause you get, you can crash, you crash, yeah. especially yeah. if you don't eat something. So yeah. Yeah. coffee yeah. plus a meal, always. Yeah. Always. Yeah. Yeah. But I've experienced that too. Probably about maybe 35, 40 minutes in, I get like this pit in my stomach and it mm -hmm. feels, and it's like, I guess I can say that's a crash, right? I don't want to hesitate too much on, you know, yeah. the labeling how it feels, but you know, there's a difference between when I'm drinking coffee pre-workout and I'm drinking green tea during my workout, because right. rarely do I work out and drink coffee during my workout, as right. opposed to when I got green tea, you know, cold green tea, right? Uh -huh. I'm just sipping it. You know what I mean? Like water yeah. as during my workout, I'm constantly getting that that energy boost, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and I've done, you know, drink coffee like that. Uh, but my body got too hot and I'm like, no, nah, I'm not feeling this. You know what I mean? I just got yeah. too, too hot. You know, I'm like, all right, this yeah. is, I'm, I'm doing too much. I'm here. I look up, it's a right. hour and 45 minutes. I was supposed to be gone 35 minutes ago. You do, you know, can't get, you can't get carried away. You can't get right. carried away. And so, you know, we're talking about pre-workout and, uh, during workouts and what is it that you eat? post-workout how is your, yeah. your post-workout meals what are you what are you eating what do you recommend to, to mm -hmm. so during the week um I, I pretty much um do two different types of meals during the week I uh -huh. do smoothie okay um I do a, a wide range of smoothie but my favorite smoothie is a cup of berries mixed berries um because berries are one of the fruits that are a little bit they're lower in sugar it doesn't spike your blood sugar as fast as a banana or um pineapples or mango or something like that so i do a cup of berries i do uh, one scoop of protein powder depending on how hard i go when if i went I got super you. hard i will do two scoops but okay. typically it's just one scoop of protein powder um i'll do um uh one tablespoon of almond butter okay and um i will put flaxseed in it that's for hormonal balance and then uh milk or coconut water okay. and i typically do pea, pro pea protein milk so ripple milk okay okay i've yet to try uh pea protein milk i've yet, mm -hmm. yet to try any of those i think i've i tried a plant-based uh protein powder uh or gain or game that was pretty good. It wasn't as as gritty. I've had that one, mm -hmm. um, so that was pretty good. Now moving on to the next question. Now yeah. you let me know about your your good your good food. So what is your favorite cheat meal? Cheat meal. Cheat, cheat meal. Um, snack item. Whatever the case yeah. may be. However you want to classify. Uh, What's your favorite? You, you know I'm from Memphis, so mm -hmm. I'm definitely gonna go get me some hot wings. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. You know I'm definitely like not one of those ones that will go to the hot wing place and say, "Hey, let me get, um, you know, some hot wings and just let me get the side of vegetables." No, nope, give me the yeah. hot wings. Give me the yeah, fries. Give me, so give me some I'm diet barbecue it, sauce. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> so that and also pizza. Love. Okay. I got you. I, I got pizza. you. I got you. What's your favorite? Um, so What's your favorite, favorite toppings? Yeah. So my favorite toppings, I will always do, you know, cheese, spinach. I got to throw some vegetables on there. So okay. spinach, um, chicken, pineapples, and bell peppers. I know it probably sound crazy to people that's going to listen to it, but it's good. All right, I'm gonna have to try that in the future. I'm gonna have to try that in the future. I might have to try that one in the future and see how that one goes. How that one goes. Now you talked about like your female clients and your male clients, or just your clientele at all, um, overall. And you also mentioned your your position in the in the in the, in the school district, and far as the mm -hmm. far as the, the cafeterias and things like that. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to far as your personal and your individual clientele, what do you offer them? What services can you and, and do you offer them? Yeah, so I offer um, meal plans and nutrition counseling, and I also do meal prep. 
Okay. Um, yep. So Look at I you. Do, <laughs> yeah, I do all three of those. Um, I am also going to start getting into um pantry clean out and refrigeration clean out um okay. staples that you can have in your home um that you will always be okay so you know have that base those basic cans of beans rice yeah um you know you can get some canned salmon tuna if you have all those basic there's no reason why you can't make a balanced meal you're right you're right you're um, right so you're i want right. to start getting into that i haven't started yet okay i'm going to try it out see how yeah. it goes over I gotcha. um and i also did um i also offer um coming in and helping you learn how to cook a easy balanced meal you know you can use air fryers um because air fryers are quick it's yeah. not messy you can clean yeah. it up real quick um and just really easy 10 to 20 minute meals so okay. i've done that with a few clients and most of those clients are older um, okay but yeah, so that's what okay. I offer. Awesome, awesome. Now, what lesson did you learn about yourself when you reached your goal that you can give those who may be on the fence about starting their fitness journey? Um, the biggest thing is just you just got to actually do it. You can always tell yourself, hey, uh, you know, it didn't go very well today, so I'm going to start next week. Mm -hmm. You know, What's the point in throwing the rest of your week away just because you had one bad day? It's okay. We're all going to have bad days. We are not perfect and we we can't claim to be. So, you know, take it for what it is and just keep pushing forward and then just do better the next day. That's basically because I'm very hard yeah. on myself. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I'm, if I feel like I'm trying to give advice to somebody and then I'm not doing it, mm -hmm. it makes me feel terrible. So it's like, no, you had a, you didn't have a yeah. so, so good day. Yeah. Um, but, you know, don't label good and bad foods like everything you eat will give your body something that you need. Something, right, right. And that goes back to what you were talking about earlier about um, kind of like, you know, demonizing food. I've been seeing that phrase being used a lot um, with people have more of a kind of approach like you. You know, mm -hmm. it's like educate yourself versus demonizing food, demonizing everything, you know, yeah. learn the calorie intake, learn the the macros within it and the purpose of it. And then yeah. you will be less likely to, to demonize, you know, exactly. a food and you will understand how you can fit this into your daily caloric intake exactly. or whatever, you know what I mean? And it's yeah. more about educating yourself and the words uh, I learned from GI Joe back when I was a young and it's, you know, no one is half the battle. And yeah. that is important. You know, that is important because if yeah. you don't know, then you're just going to be out. You're just going to mm -hmm. just be out and you're going to be, you know, making some decisions that, in hindsight, it would be 2020. It's like, you know, I could have made a better one at that time. I just didn't know. I just right. didn't know. So for those people who are looking for a nutritionist, a dietitian, somebody who can um, do almost like a, 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 a hoarders come in, clean up with, you know, the cameras and everything like that, go into the refrigerator and say, you know, get this out, get this out, get this yeah. out. Tell everybody where they can reach you at if they want to connect with you. Yes, you can reach me at Nourish Me K. That's N O U R I S H M E K A Y on all social media platforms from awesome, YouTube awesome. all the way yeah. down to Instagram. <laughs> and I'll have all of her information in the description box just as well. I want to thank Kayla for coming on to the Success thank Fitness you. Podcast. I really appreciate it. And thank if you, you found fun. inspiration in today's podcast and would like to support, then sign up to my weekly newsletter, the Success Fitness Newsletter. You will get weekly notification when this podcast publishes every Sunday at 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. And you also get 10% off my new e-cookbook, What's a Meal Prep for Beginners? at successfitnessstore.com oh. and everything will be in the description box or the show notes however you want to describe it or wherever you're listening or watching this at and this brings us to the end of another episode of the success fitness podcast thank you for listening and remember if any situation is not making you stronger simply chant more weight more weight more weight peace out